The Chevy Malibu is as mild-mannered as any car in the mid-size sedan segment, but it's pretty modern, too. Think of it as Clark Kent with a smartphone. Let's take a look at the 2014 Chevy Malibu and check the tech. A mid-size sedan is more of a practical purchase than an emotional one. With this kind of car, the entire family chimes in. It's got to meet a lot of needs. Now, the Chevy Malibu does pretty well in all considerations. It's a comfortable ride, gets good fuel economy, and it's got a lot of interior space. The design is pretty conservative. This car really blends in. It's kind of the opposite of ostentatious. We see a lot of the standard Chevy design cues, like this grill with the bar right across hosting the bow tie. And in back, we've got those big square taillights that they're using these days. Underneath, we've got a McPherson style suspension in front and in back, we've got a four-link independent suspension. That's pretty standard stuff for this type of car, but Chevy does a really good job of giving this car a nice ride. Now, let's take a look under the hood to see what motivates this thing. Now, under the hood here, we've got the base engine for this car. It's a 2.5-liter four-cylinder from Chevy's Ecotec line. It's got direct injection that sprays fuel directly into the cylinders. Now, what's interesting about this is it's not quite as loud as a lot of direct injection engines. Uh, you don't hear that clattering of injectors, which you do on a, on a lot of these types of engines. Now this engine makes 196 horsepower and 186 pound-feet of torque. Uh, that's to the front wheels in this transversely mounted engine. It's a decent amount for this uh, size vehicle. Uh, the best thing though is it turns in EPA estimates of 25 miles per gallon city, 36 miles per gallon highway. That's why uh, Chevy's gone to this direct injection engine here. It's uh, pretty efficient. Now this isn't the only engine you can get for the Malibu. Chevy also offers a two liter four cylinder with a turbocharger, also uses direct injection. That gets 259 horsepower, 295 pound feet of torque. That's a lot of power. That's actually more than a lot of V6s produce, but you also take a pretty big hit in fuel economy. That'll get 21 miles per gallon city, 30 miles per gallon highway. So a little lower, you get mid 20s fuel economy, get a lot more power. That's gonna be an engine that some people are gonna want, but this base engine will do for better fuel economy all around. Now let's take a look in the cabin and see what this car is really all about. At the top of the stack here, I have a seven inch color touchscreen. This comes with a $795 navigation package and this interface will look fairly familiar to smartphone users because it's all icon based. This is Chevy's MyLink infotainment system. And all icons are the same size. They look pretty much similar. Uh, we've got one for navigation, different audio sources, phone, different offline information sources here as well. Uh, on the sides of the bezel, we have these capacitive touch areas here so I can go straight to navigation just by hitting that or I can go to destination by hitting this side. I've got my phone button here and uh, I can go back to home. That'll bring me back to this, uh, this icon view. There's this source uh, area up here for the capacitive touch bezel, and I don't really like this as much. Uh, this doesn't bring up an audio screen. This merely kind of scrolls through, toggles through the different audio sources. So it doesn't bring you directly to the audio source. You can kind of keep on hitting it and go through the different ones. Now, if I go to the navigation area, I get this nice, uh, pretty good looking map. It's showing me uh, traffic, of course, on the major freeways around the area here. I'd like to see a little more coverage for the surface streets, too. A lot of navigation systems are actually covering more surface streets with navigation, so I'm not really seeing that. I don't know if it's because there's no traffic problems around here right now, or uh, it just doesn't cover that area. Now, when I go to enter a destination, I hit this area, like I mentioned before, and I get a lot of options for destination. I can do address entry, I can search points of interest, previous destinations, all that good stuff. I can even go to actual GPS coordinate entry. Now, I've also got this thing called Travel Guide. This is a pretty cool feature. I like this a lot. If I bring this up, I can search through a lot of local points of interest. These aren't businesses necessarily. These are things you might want to find if you're on a, a road trip and you're just kind of looking around for something interesting to see. Of course, we got our phone area here, and we've got the normal stuff with the phone uh, system integrated here. I can uh, take a look at my phone book and see all my different uh, uh, different contacts, those are uh, visible on the screen here. I could also hit the uh, voice command button and bring those up and just say call Wayne Cunningham or something like that, and it'll give me the options for the numbers I have stored here and, and place that call right away. Voice command in this car also works with navigation, and it lets you say the entire address in a single string, which is nice, but I haven't been very successful with it. I've tried to say uh, the, the alley we're on right now, Tehama Street, and that's a tough one for a lot of cars. Some get it better than others. This one never got it once, so hmm, not so successful with that. 
The cooler thing though is, so I've got an iPod attached here. I can also have a USB drive, go to that, and I can actually hit voice command and say, play an artist or play a song or play an album. So I'll, I'll try it right now. Please say a command. Play artist, Frightened Rabbit. Now playing artist, Frightened Rabbit. And it finds all the songs I have by that artist, brings up, I can see it's playing right now. So that's pretty cool. Now this car also has Siri hands-free. I could use that for navigation too if I didn't have the navigation system here or any of this good stuff. So that's the, the MyLink infotainment system here. One thing uh, Chevy announced at the Consumer Electronics Show this last uh, couple of weeks is they're gonna add something called App Shop. I don't know if this is gonna just be on the 2015 Chevy Malibu and not on this generation, or they might retroactively update it. It'll be nice to see. So down on the console here, we've got the shifter for the six-speed automatic transmission. This is a pretty standard transmission for this uh, class of car right now. Uh, but one thing this has is a manual mode, which you don't necessarily see that often. So I pull it all the way back, put it in the manual mode, and I've got this rocker switch on top of the shifter that actually lets me go through the gears. You can use this in situations like if you're going down a long uh, descent and you want to hold it in third or something like that, uh, use engine braking to get down the hill, or in maybe some situations where you're going up a, a slippery hill that's fairly steep and you want to keep it in a single gear without having it upshift and change your torque at your uh, wheels. So now let's take this thing on the road. I wouldn't call the driving character of the Malibu really engaging, but it is very, very easy and that's very appropriate for a mid-size sedan. But one thing this engine does have to uh, help it save some energy, it's got an auto stop feature. So if you're stopping at a stoplight or something, it will uh, stop the engine for you. And sometimes those features aren't done very well. Sometimes they're, I don't know, they, they really, are they really intrusive. But in this car, you barely feel it at all. One thing we have in this car that is uh, part of the entertainment and electronics package are a lot of driver alert features. So this gives us a rear view camera when I put it in reverse. We've got blind spot monitors, and those will put little icons on either side mirror if there's a car back in my blind spot on either side. That's a really nice feature to have. There's also a lane departure alert. So if I were to drift across a lane line, like if I was drowsy or something like that, it would uh, beep at me. The most interesting feature here is the uh, collision warning. This is really just a warning, it won't uh, hit the brakes for you, but the uh, collision warning it uses this camera looking forward as does the uh, lane departure system, same camera. And that, if you're coming up on another car too fast or uh, you know slower traffic, maybe if you're distracted by something, it'll actually flash a red light on the inside of the uh, windshield and it'll give you an alert too. And that'll kind of tell you it's time to hit the brakes because you're about to hit a car in front of you. All right, let's price out our 2014 Chevy Malibu. This model in 2LT trim goes for $25,215. Add in navigation for $795, that gets you the touch screen. And also we have the electronics and entertainment package. That gives me that collision warning, blind spot monitor, rear view camera, and the upgraded Pioneer stereo system. That package costs $1,750. And with a few other options in here, total price for this model is $30,125. The Chevy Malibu faces a lot of competition in the mid-size sedan segment. There's better looking cars like the Ford Fusion or the Mazda 6. But one thing the Chevy Malibu has going for it is that MyLink infotainment system. It's definitely one of the better infotainment interfaces I've seen and it's got a lot of good features. We also have OnStar which has a lot of good telematics functions. So that might sway you in the purchase of this car.